Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing, once again, the recently announced HBO Harry Potter TV series. Very brief update for those unaware, Warner Bros Discovery made headlines all around the world last week when they confirmed plans for a new Harry Potter series. Each season will be authentic to the original books and bring Harry Potter and these incredible adventures to new audiences around the world, while the original, classic, and beloved films will remain at the core of the franchise and available to watch globally. But as I discussed in my previous video on the topic, recasting Harry Potter for HBO Max, Philosopher's Stone, I can't help but wonder about casting. With such big shoes to fill, casting for this series must be a bit hectic. That's why today I'm going to be picking up where I left off in the last video and casting for the second installment of the Harry Potter series, The Chamber of Secrets. Like I mentioned last time, I want to see fresh faces for all of the child actors, so I'll be sticking to strictly some of the main adult characters introduced in the second book. Let's dive into it. Gilderoy Lockhart Recasting the five-time winner of Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award won't be an easy task. Gilderoy Lockhart is a famous wizarding celebrity and author, introduced in the second book, that ends up with a teaching position at Hogwarts, taking over as the instructor for Defense Against the Dark Arts. However, as we come to later understand, the Lockhart in the public eye is certainly not representative of the fraudster underneath, a man that built his entire reputation on lies and deceit. Over the course of the book film, Lockhart's true motivations slowly unravel. In the film adaptation of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Lockhart is played by Kenneth Branagh, a well-known British actor and director with a career spanning several decades. Branagh's portrayal of Lockhart was praised for its comedic timing and over-the-top personality, capturing the character's narcissism and self-absorption. To me, Lockhart is Kenneth Branagh. However, as the show is likely to have a different tone than the films, it's important to find an actor who can bring a fresh perspective to the role. While Kenneth Branagh's portrayal of Lockhart in the film was beloved by many, it's important to remember that this is a new adaptation with new opportunities for creative choices. My first choice of the role would be Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor is a Scottish actor that has risen to prominence through his incredible performances in films like Trainspotting, The Island, Big Fish, Doctor Sleep, and even Star Wars. He has an incredibly wide range as an actor, having performed well in both comedic and more dramatic roles, and I think that he would be able to perfectly encapsulate both the likeable and deceitful sides of Lockhart's character. But before we delve in any further, I need to say this. Have you ever noticed that the wizards in Harry Potter have exceptionally manicured beards? The only problem is, as far as I know, there's no wizarding spell that could be responsible. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped, the global men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the beard market. Trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide, new to Manscaped's collection is a revolutionary beard styling kit for the modern man, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. But what does the ideal beard grooming routine look like, and how can Manscaped's new trimmer assist you in achieving your best look? Tip 1. Know what style is best for you Thanks to the Beard Hedger, we've now got more than 20 hair cutting lengths to choose from, all accessible with just one guard and their zoom wheel. Tip 2. Not all beard hairs grow the same Beards can be patchy, that's why it's important to hide these issues by taking care of your skin and keeping the hairs hydrated. Included in the Beard Hedger Kit is the Manscaped Dermatologist Tested Beard Oil. Tip 3. Be patient Growing a proper beard takes time, which is why you'll want to keep things tidy by trimming the edges with the waterproof Beard Hedger's 7200 RPM motor and titanium coated T-blade. Tip 4. Clean your beard and make it smell amazing Along with the kit comes Manscaped's vegan shampoo and beard conditioner, which pamper your beard with nourishing oils and antioxidants that rehydrate hair. Along with the kit, you even get a free beard accessory pack that includes a beard comb, beard scissors, and beard brush. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free shipping when you use promo code HPTheory at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code HPTheory at manscaped.com. Who knew that the key to wizardly grooming was in the muggle world all along? My next choice would be Taron Egerton. Egerton is a Welsh actor with a proven ability to embody charming and charismatic characters, as demonstrated by his performances in films like Kingsman and Rocketman. Through his previous acting experience, Egerton has shown that he can portray characters with a certain level of charisma and confidence that will be necessary for a character like Lockhart, who is known for his good looks and self-absorbed personality. My last choice that unfortunately won't happen due to his age is Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant is in my mind the perfect Lockhart, next to Branagh of course, and as it happens, Grant was actually offered the role of Lockhart long long ago when they were initially casting for the Chamber of Secrets. 
a role he ended up turning down because he was too busy with other projects. With that said, however, Grant is an expert at cheesy charming. It's just a shame that he's 62, as that would not work for the relatively young professor. Lucius Malfoy Next up, we're casting Lucius Malfoy, cruel Death Eater, father of Draco and husband to Narcissa. In the films, Lucius was played by actor Jason Isaacs, who was able to perfectly encapsulate the snide, but sometimes calamitous nature of his character. We've got quite a few choices for Lucius, and they are in no particular order. First up is Michael Fassbender. Fassbender is a well-known Irish-German actor who rose to stardom for his performances in films like Glorious Bastards, X-Men First Class, and Steve Jobs. Fassbender is a versatile actor with a wide range of abilities that has demonstrated his ability to play complex, multi-dimensional characters in a variety of movies. Lucius Malfoy is a complex character with many layers, and Fassbender could bring a unique interpretation to the role. Fassbender's commanding presence on screen would be a great asset for playing Lucius Malfoy, who exudes power and privilege, at least initially. Luke Evans Luke Evans is a Welsh actor and singer who is famous for his roles in movies such as Clash of the Titans, Immortals, and The Three Musketeers. He has also appeared on stage and performed in many of London's West End productions. I don't know what it is about Evans, but I think he'd be able to play the cold, aristocratic, and haughty wizard quite well. Henry Cavill Henry Cavill is a British actor that began his career with roles in the feature adaptations of The Count of Monte Cristo and I Capture the Castle. One of his most popular roles is Superman in the 2013 movie Man of Steel. He's also very famous for the Netflix series The Witcher, where he played Geralt of Rivia. Cavill's got a great range and I think he'd do a great job at portraying Lucius. My only issue is that he might not be too believable as a bad guy. Wildcard Tom Felton there's been some speculation online that Tom Felton, who played Draco Malfoy in the Harry Potter series, could reprise the role of Lucius in the new show. While this is a fun idea, I don't really want to mishmash the two worlds. Tom Riddle Next up, we've got Tom Riddle, the one from the diary, not to be confused with adult Voldemort played by Ray Fiennes. In the Chamber of Secrets, this young version of Tom Riddle was played by actor Christian Coulson. For this role, there aren't a lot of names that come to mind, but for some reason, and I may be totally off on this, I think that Timothy Chalamet would do a good job. That is, so long as he's able to master the accent. His boyish good looks and what I believe to be potential to look menacing would complement the role well. I'd particularly like to hear your suggestions for this one, as I couldn't really think of many other names. Next up, we've got Minerva McGonagall. Professor Minerva McGonagall is a stern but deeply concerned witch that serves as head of Gryffindor House. In the film, she was portrayed by the iconic actress Dame Maggie Smith. One of the first names I've seen thrust into the mix is Olivia Colman. Colman is a British actress and producer that has worked steadily as an actress on British TV since the early to mid 2000s, appearing in hit shows like Accused, Mr. Sloan, Peep Show, and Broadchurch. I think she's got just the right range to play McGonagall, and I can imagine her now calling students to attention. Wildcard Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson has actually already appeared in Harry Potter in the role of Sybil Trelawney, Hogwarts Divination Professor. However, there's something about her that just feels perfect for McGonagall. My only issue is that, like I mentioned earlier, I don't really want to mix the two worlds. Let me know if you agree in the comments. The Dursleys, Vernon and Petunia. Next up, we've got Harry's awful uncle and aunt, Vernon and Petunia Dursley, a spiteful pair that tormented poor Harry nearly all of his formative years. Vernon Dursley is characterized by his pompous, narrow-minded, and materialistic personality. He's highly critical of anything related to magic and wizards, and has a strange obsession with appearing respectable and normal to the outside world. Vernon is another character that's exceptionally difficult to cast, but with some research, I was able to come up with a few replacements. The first name that came to mind was Ian McNeese, an actor famous for his portrayal of government agent Harcourt in the 1985 television series Edge of Darkness. McNeese has also gained recognition for his roles in popular films such as The Englishman Who Went Up a Hill But Came Down a Mountain and Frank Herbert's Dune. McNeese has a huge personality, a loud booming voice, and a perfect portly build that would fit Vernon Dursley. My next choice would be Hugh Bonneville, a British actor known for his extensive work in film, television, and stage. Bonneville is perhaps best well known for his portrayal of Robert Crawley, Earl of Grantham, in the ITV historical drama series Downton Abbey. Bonneville doesn't exactly have the right build for Vernon, but if you put on a bit of weight, I think he could be pretty convincing. 
Petunia Dursley is characterised by her jealousy, bitterness and insecurity. Like Vernon, she is highly critical of anything related to magic and is often hostile towards Harry because of his magical abilities. However, it is later revealed that her animosity towards Harry stems from her jealousy of her sister Lily's magical abilities, which she always wanted for herself. One of the first actresses that comes to my mind is Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton is a Scottish actress known for her roles in both independent art house films and blockbusters. Over the course of her career, she's been cast in a very diverse array of roles, one of the most impressive, in my opinion, being her role as the White Witch in the Chronicles of Narnia. In whatever film I see her in, she always has a lot of screen presence, and with her Scottish background, I'm sure she would slot in perfectly with the Harry Potter set. Swinton was actually originally considered for the role of Professor Trelawney, the quirky, unusual and perhaps sometimes deluded divination professor. However, the role of Trelawney was eventually given to actress Emma Thompson. Perhaps this is Swinton's opportunity to join Harry Potter once and for all. And that's it for this video. Let me know what you think of my choices and be sure to comment your own choices down below. Also, be sure to check out my first video on this subject where I cover casting for the first film. Also, stay on the lookout for part 3 when I cover Prisoner of Azkaban. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.